The reality is this is not only an issue for us about creatively addressing these issues because we don't have money. It is an issue for elite higher education as a whole. And it falls into three, four basic categories. One is the need to ensure that we continue to invest in and grow great academic programs. Great academic programs require continuous curriculum renewal, attention obviously to co-curricular activities, obviously. Here in this environment, an absolute commitment to the important, importance of place-based education through the living model and relevance to the job market. We need to keep doing that, and obviously, with the pace of change in knowledge accumulation in the marketplace, we need to move from what I call episodic, ritualistic curriculum renewal every 5 to 10 to 15 years to continuous curriculum renewal that recognizes the half-life of knowledge as it's being developed. That's programs. The fundamental question we have is we have this beautiful 325-acre physical plant, and the question is, what is the relevance of the kinds of changes we are contemplating in the educational model going forward? And what is the relevance of the facility structures of institutions with whom we compete for high quality students? Because you can't have a great school without great students. And how do we ensure the evolution of this physical plant in ways that move the institution forward educationally and socially? Uh, there is no question in my mind when Sasaki is done with the remotest level of their presentation, the cost of their recommendations will wildly exceed the net worth of this institution. And I keep telling them don't focus on the money yet. Right? We'll have plenty of time to focus on the money. Now we need to focus on the ideas. We need to get the ideas right. We need to get the communities excited. We need to get to see what's possible, and how and why it's important. So that's the physical. We've done a great job in orchestrating the management of the capacity that's provided with this institution with demand, and have changed the economic structure of the institution materially, so where we don't worry at all anymore in the short run whether or not we're going to have a surplus in any given operating year. That's no longer the issue. The issue now is how do we build a model that not only satisfies our need to have operating surpluses, but satisfies an incremental need to be able to accumulate resources to be able to support these exciting needs in the future, stimulates a broader collection of alumni and friends in that exercise going forward, uh, and helps us to see what that means. Now, I have asserted Regardless of any analysis that you might make about our financial picture, I've asserted that we are going to continuously, for the foreseeable future, be critically dependent on a broad array of earned income opportunities. Those earned income opportunities bring interesting opportunities and challenges to the community as a whole. And whether it's alumni, advisory boards, or friends, or students, or anybody else in this community, we need to develop our capacity to have high quality conversations of strategic import about things we've never seen and experienced. We're going to keep bringing to the community opportunities we've never seen, places we've never gone to, partnerships we've never experienced. And instead of rejecting them out of hand as being outside of the domain of our collective experience, we need to maintain an open mind in thinking through what those opportunities might look like and what they might bring. So we have programmatic, we have physical, we have fiscal, and then quite honestly we have the most important, human resources. This is an extraordinary place-based institution. That doesn't mean we don't have a fast track program, which is hybrid learning. It doesn't mean that we're not making substantive investments in technology enabled learning in all sorts of ways. But what it does mean, at least from my perspective and my willingness to commit as the president of the institution as we frame the strategic agenda, is this institution will remain, actually must remain to do its work a place-based intense residential experience. Now, what I just said 
is a very expensive statement. What I'm saying is I believe it is absolutely imperative that Babson College remain a place-based, residentially focused, intense face-to-face -face experience that delivers a kind of learning that simply cannot be delivered online. The only way we defend this institution against a very different kind of learning is to recognize that what we do is different and to create value for that in the minds of people who support us by paying tuition. It also requires us to recognize that it requires the support of all of you who provide both energy and philanthropic support to make this real. So I want you to come away with the ability to test whether or fact this notion of the importance of a place-based institution where we live and learn entrepreneurially is worthy of your attention, your time, your energy, and your support. I think we have built something pretty extraordinary here and I think we have even more opportunities to extend on that work going forward. So where's the human resource equation there? That will take new faculty. We will have a reasonably large segment of our faculty aging out over the next decade. And this morning, Carolyn Hotchkiss with the trustees began the process of talking about what are the characteristics of the faculty of the future and how do we build models to ensure that we have a higher probability of being able to attract and retain them? How do we ensure that we continue to bring the best and most suitable students for our education to this campus? By the way, the incredible thing about this campus, and one of the things I'm proudest of, we are a need-blind institution that finances over 80% of its financial aid cost internally. Right? By need blind for our American students, we're saying that we are trying to provide the opportunity for them to apply and attend this institution without concern for financial need. By the way, over 80% of it coming out of our operating budget, and by the way, we can't afford it. And by the way, it won't change. Because it is so integral to the nature of the human resource equation. Now, what you need to understand, students are a talent market, just like any other labor market. And we gap our students. That means that we're need blind, but we only pay 94% of their need. And I can guarantee you, when we're up against Bowdoin, and we're up against any of the other little Ivies, and we're up against the Ivies, they need 100% of need. I don't want someone to say they got accepted to Babson but couldn't go because we couldn't figure out a way to make it work. Desperately need your commitment to increase support for financial aid of all kinds, for entrepreneurs of all kinds. Now, many of you are sitting here, not Americans, saying, well, what does it mean to me? The issue for this campus is very simple. We have an extraordinary population of international students Right? At the MBA level, over 50% in the full-time program. At the undergraduate program, 28% by point of application from 74 different countries. Extraordinary. We also have a class issue on this campus. We have a wealthy international population combined with a less wealthy American population. We do our best to make that work. Nothing could make me happier than international families stepping up and saying it is as important to have that class diversity in the international population as we have in the US-based population. And we've begun the process of engaging in conversations with many of you to try and begin to build programs that make that a reality. The reality of these differences in wealth, one of the biggest social issues that we face on this campus, and it is a difficult one to overcome without systematically trying to actually address the substantive roots of those activities. Best faculty, best students, in the best environment, with a learning model committed to place, committed to intense experience, 
and committed to actually building a generation of young people who care about more things than just making money. And who actually care not only about doing that work here, but doing that work in the world.